Okay, I'd like to call the meeting of the Urbana City Council to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Bowersox Johnson. Mr. Jacobson. Here. Mr. Lewis. Here. Ms. Marlin. Here. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Smythe. Here. Ms. Stevenson. Mayor Pressing. Here. Uh, the first item is the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. We have two sets of minutes, December 17th, 2012, and a special meeting on December 21st. So moved. Motion by Lewis, seconded by Smythe. Any discussion, additions, or corrections? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Are there any additions to the agenda? Okay, we'll move on to um, petitions and communications. They're being gathered. Council, uh, I want to introduce two people tonight. Um, Lonnie Morris is with the Sierra Club, um, the statewide Cool Cities program, and Stacy James is with the local Sierra Club chapter, and they're here tonight to present a, an award to the city. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Um, we are here tonight um, to present the city of Urbana with a Cool Cities Achievement Award. It is our pleasure to present this award to a city that has made so many sustainability improvements over the past um, five years since the mayor signed on to the U.S. Mayor's Climate Protection Agreement. Um, you have followed the recommendations to a T. You joined ICLE. You conducted a greenhouse gas inventory to know where your greenhouse gases were coming from. You established a sustainability advisory commission to oversee your work. You have written a fantastic climate action plan that sets excellent goals, um, short term and long term, that are completely consistent with the science. The, the piece that allowed you to um, achieve the reduction targets in the U.S. Mayor's Climate Protection Agreement was going out for electricity aggregation and buying renewable energy. So you have significantly reduced the carbon footprint for your community, and it is due to the vision of the mayor and the council members. So we thank you very much for your accomplishments. Well, thank you. Very good, thank you. We, ha we have a very heavy security here. We have a velvet <laughs> rope. <laughs> you got to hurdle it. Yeah, right. right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is Mari Ryan, who's the chair of our Sustainability Advisory It's because you're cool. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be blue, green, colorblind. Okay. <laughs> okay, yes. Nick Taylor. Is Nick Taylor still here? Okay. You have um, five minutes to, you don't have to take five minutes, but you have up to five minutes. And please state your name and address for the record. Okay. My name is Nick Taylor. I'm here with <coughs> Remax Realty Associates representing the Alpha, Alpha and Omega Church. Currently has a property at 1501 uh, North Goodwin in Urbana. We are here in requesting a zoning change for a property that's approximately three and a half acres. There consists of a single family residence asking for a B2 zoning from an R2 zoning and are requesting that the uh, consideration be given by the board to be able to consent to that. Uh, the intent is to split the property into two different pieces, a west side and an east side of this particular property that will face on to Bradley. And the zoning will allow uh, neighborhood. We're here tr uh, with a possible uh, 
purchaser that will be putting a mortuary funeral home in the west boundary piece of that and so it will be a lower density trafficked area and they would be basically uh, exiting mostly onto the Bradley. There might be a service uh, entrance to the south of the property but mostly the business will face onto Bradley. I'm sorry I don't have any drawings because we didn't have any zoning yet to know exactly what we could do and we do have a representative from the funeral home here as well this evening. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next is Robert Dodd. Um, you can do it right now if you like. It's about the only thing we have on the agenda, so you might as well start. Robert Dodd, I'm an attorney and I represent Alpha and Omega Church. I have made the application on behalf of the church for the change to your comprehensive plan and to uh, allow for the rezoning of the property located on Bradley and Goodwin. Your uh, staff has done an excellent job of summarizing what we have presented and what has been and what is the position. And I don't want to bore you with what you uh, presumably have read carefully. Um, but in principle, this property has lay unused for since 1973, except for a single family um, home that has been used for some rental purposes. And I will come back to that to that house. It is there have been uh, attempts by the church through a company, their A and O Development, to try to develop it for residential use, and the potential support has never been there. But the cost of doing it, the combination of factors, has never allowed it to be developed, including working with the housing authority and others that we have taught, tried to bring about some use of it as a residential area. It is on a very major street and a street that has commercial at various spots, but is recognized in our uh, request that this is meant to bring about a small business opportunity rather than some large commercial development which would also allow if a proper developer came along or someone came became interested that it would include potential for a uh, residential there is as uh, represented uh, by nick taylor a moment ago a buyer that is ready and willing to bring a funeral home that will service the uh, community and and the immediate community as well as the entire community and that that would take the west portion of the property. We feel this is a proper infill. It had been uh, unused territory. It is not a strong tax base for the community. It has not been able to be developed as a residential area. The intent throughout is to try to develop it in such a way that it is not an interference with the adjoining uh, single family homes of which are on the other side of it and which I think are it's very important to preserve that atmosphere that traffic would not become part of the side streets uh, that it should be oriented to Goodwin and of course mainly to Bradley and that it will complement the neighborhood we um, have tried to do it in such a way as we originally talked about it as a potential B3 for uh, various reasons and at the uh, plan commission we withdrew the request recognizing that it truly is meant to be a neighborhood and it is a complementary to what your directions have been in in your own uh, stat statutes and, and uh, the provisions that you provide under your laws we believe re believe that with the adjoining property of the uh, Illinois American Water Company being idle empty and except for the water head I mean it's not you know it's not a active with the multi-family units around on part of the properties, it will be a complementary type of development rather than an, a contrasting development in terms of anything that would drastically uh, modify or change the area. And I believe that that, again, fulfills part of your guidelines for commercial business centers that serve a na neighborhood in a less dense manner. And we believe that their proposal and uh, to do a B, to provide B2 uh, zoning will allow that to happen. 
most importantly, the B2 zoning has very limited opportunity for any kind of use that would be, again, a, a, a contrast or an interference with the neighborhood. It would take a special use uh, permit, or a nice permit, especially, but special use uh, and the hearings to do something on most of the more drastic types of use that you provide under your B2. So the, the um, zoning board and uh, the could provide a, a review of anything that would be unusual or more drastic in that area. Okay. I'd be welcome to have any questions at any time. Any questions for Mr. Dodd? Eric Jason? Yes, sorry. Um, are there other instances of uh, mortuary slash funeral homes on the same block as residential property so that they're immediately adjacent? Is, um, that, is that common? It, it's, it has been traditionally very common. Um, I do not know what Pruitt is doing now. Um, if you go back to Westside Park, where Westside Park is developed, that was originally a neighborhood uh, of its own. Yes, there are, for instance, the um, new development of, and I just lost the name of the uh, funeral home on this, that developed in Savoy. I apologize, I don't remember their name. I know them. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, you know, it, there, that too is actually surrounded. Um, if you look at it, it's about the same size, mm -hmm. and it's surrounded on uh, two sides by residential and a third side by the uh, senior citizen uh, apartment type housing. So it is similar in that regard. Um, most funeral homes uh, traditionally have been within neighborhoods, and I, so I, I don't believe that it is a, a unusual use at all. Anyone else? Charlie? Yes, Charlie. How, how close does the property line, I couldn't quite tell from the, the plans, how close does the property line run to the houses that are along Matthews on the, on the east side of Matthews? What's the, how much space is um, there? Because we have no development on the property itself, I, I don't know how far any development would separate it. The houses are, the, the t existing houses are fairly uh, t typical for the neighborhood. Do not have large yards, if that's if that's what you're looking for. Uh, I can s I just blew it up a little bit. I can sort of see the back property yes. line now. Yes, and it's um, obviously your um, building and zoning requirements have limitations on how how far the commercial can move uh, to the towards the street on the, within the property lines. But that's one of the reasons why splitting this into two large parcels rather than the small parcels has an advantage. Robert? Uh, you mentioned, uh, someone mentioned earlier that we were going to go to the east side or west side? The, uh, the w my understanding is, well, I know what it is, but <laughs> I want to okay. confirm. My understanding is we're well, doing the west side. I have the contract. I just, you know, yes. The reason I asked the west side was it because of the setbacks on the corner? Um, I don't. I, I did not participate in the negotiations. Okay. It allows access from t from Goodwin and Bradley, and my encouragement. I do not represent the potential buyers, obviously. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my encouragement for any development here would be that they maintain uh, Bradley and secondary access off of Goodwin. Although I have no authority to speak for that. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Sean Jones. No. No. I mean, not at the city council meeting. You could certainly talk to him afterwards. Um, you could go outside and talk with him if you'd like to, but I'd like Sean Jones to come up and talk to the city council right now. If he wants to talk to you, that's fine. Hi, uh, I'm Sean Jones. I represent the buyer <coughs> and uh, with London Council Realty. I'm um, basically, I am here to answer any questions that uh, you may have uh, in respect as much as I can. Okay. So. Who's got a question? Charlie. Okay, well, Sean, oh, I just lost my. Sean, 
in looking at the uh, satellite picture, which I just lost on my screen here, um, if this, if the, if the mortuary is to be built in from in the north-south block behind the houses that are basically to the to the east of the houses that are uh, currently on Matthews, uh, that puts it sort of to the to the west then of the existing house that sits all by itself at, at the current time. Is that correct? Is that the is that the footprint that's planned? Okay. Correct. It, it should be. Okay. It would be the. Uh, Right, the right backyard the, of uh, uh, right in the center here. Then correct. Yeah. Okay, that's and then okay. So my my biggest concern with it is is actually how it impacts. You know, I, I think you can buffer to the the how. You know, I, I think the mortuary is compatible uh, backyard to backyard. Uh, I'm a little more concerned about the the impact of the to the houses to the south, the ones that are across Beardsley, for example. Now you're say, you know you're saying that the secondary access would not be to Beardsley, but would there be a road across to 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 to, to uh, Goodwin? Is that the plan? Right. Well, the plan is that yeah, off of this uh, Goodwin area here, we could do a service entry here. I think there was an existing, if I'm right, there was an existing road that uh, you can sort of see an old yeah. yeah. Okay. And that would be just merely a service entry. Uh huh. And, uh, to, uh, but the main entry would be from the front side, of course, on Bradley. Okay, and then w would most of the parking be in the backyard? Most then? of the, most of the parking, uh, the plan uh, called for most of the parking to be in the back. Okay, in in the back of uh, parking lot right there, and of course, would like I said, either a circle drive here, and also a drive on the uh, probably be on the, I would say that's the east side. So. Okay. Okay, thank you. Oh, Robert, are you going to put up some pictures to help us? Thank you. Okay. So, uh, oh, sorry. Um, you're dumb, Charlie. Okay, Eric. So, so if I understand this rightly, there's there's a faint uh, path uh, going from uh, east to west along the south side of the property, and and uh, it goes towards Goodwin Avenue and and you're suggesting there or you're saying I guess that there'd be an access across that which would be across the eastern half of the property to the uh, to the funeral home right that could that would be feasible if we did that yes um, so uh, but yeah so the uh, okay so there'd be some sort of setback where, where do you envision uh, the parking lot Right directly, park right. The the dwelling would face Bradley, and the parking okay. lot would be right behind. So the right behind okay, the so the parking lot would be behind. So there'd be a building fronting Bradley. Correct. Parking lot behind the building. Correct. Access to that parking lot by a. Uh, uh, an, an extended drive to Goodwin, from that, Goodwin. That could be feasible, yes. Uh huh. And so, how close would the parking lot come to the homes to the property line of the homes to the west? There's no specific plans for that right now, but uh, we will be doing the plans in accordance with the city, and mm -hmm. also uh, an engineering, a local engineering firm will be hired to determine that and coordinate that with the city officials. Okay, so there'll be some sort of. Uh, I guess this is really then a question for Robert or for staff. There'd be some setback required uh, between those back property lines and the parking lot? Yes, I'm pretty okay. sure it is. Okay, any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Reverend Belinda Carr.
Good please, evening. Hi, please state your name and address for the record. Reverend Melinda Carr, 211 West Tremont Street, Champaign, Illinois. And I am uh, the president of the Minister Alliance of Champaign Urbana Vicinity. I'm here to support um, uh, the residents of the Dr. Ellis subdivision, residents and homeowners. The Minister Alliance voted on January 5th, Saturday, um, for this uh, situation that's going on with the residents um, in reference to the south side of Tremont Street. Um, asking that the City of Urbana Public Works Department cover the costs of repairs running on the city property to the main lateral. And there are and the residents here who will be speaking to this, this issue as well, but we voted to support um, uh, covering the costs. Could you tell us what the problem is, please? The, the problem is related to the sewer, the, the sewer, yeah. Yeah, the sewer problem. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're supporting that the I mean, did a residents sewer break or, or what happened? The residents will be speaking, though, other people who will speak oh, okay. to this, but we were supporting what's going on uh, for the city to pay, prepare the cost, but there will be more detail related to the residents who are here who will speak oh, okay. to the issue. Switching, switching topics here. All right. So Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Bishop King J. Underwood. Mrs. Mayor, Bishop King James Underwood, 1309 West Tremont Street in Havana, Illinois. And my concern is that we have a problem with the lateral. When this division was built, the lateral was placed not in the center of the street, so both sides of the, of the streets could have equal access, but it was placed in the yard of the people on the N on the north side of the street and the ordinance that you have on the book says that the homeowners will be responsible for the hookup from the house to to the T which meaning that if our line come from our house and it goes across the street under the street to hook to the ladder they we were responsible for the hookup and that means that if if we are on the south side of the street in order to hook up to the main and hook to, to the T. That means that we will have to cut up the street and go across in, in someone else's yard and dig up the yard and replace that, replace the street and replace our yard. I think that's a due unfair burden to the people on the south side of the street. And I also think that when you let, let when you do the taxes, each of us pay the same amount, but we're not getting the same benefit, and I think that's unfair. Okay. Any questions? Mayor. Eric? Oh, go ahead. oh uh, Diane was first. I guess ahead. I didn't see you, Diane. I guess the question is, is, is there a problem with it now, or you're just yes, looking at it? Yes, it is ahead? a problem, because what happens if someone's tree grows roots and it goes into the into the drain on the other side of the street that means that it's nothing happened on our side of the street but we will have to tear up the street in order to get over to the other side to do it according to what i understand is the city right of way is from sidewalk to the center of the street and uh, on the other side it would be sidewalk to center of the street but we are left footing the whole bill because of the unique situation I think the city should take care of, of paying for from, from the sidewalk across the other side of the street to the other property because uh, that's not on our land. Yeah. But yet and still, we'll have to pay you the bill. It's unfair. Has, has, have you talked about this with the Public Works Department yet? Yes, we have. Okay. And the Public Works told us, due to the fact that our line is coming, coming from our house, and, and the ordinance says that we have to pay from the house to the T, and the T is on the other side of the street. It's a catch-22. Yeah, I think Robert Lewis has raised this issue before, so we'll have to revisit it. 
Any other questions? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, Reverend, Reverend Evelyn Burnett Underwood. Oh, sorry, I didn't read your writing correctly. I stand corrected, even though I'm sitting Thank down. You. Reverend Dr. Evelyn Bur Burnett Underwood. Thank you, uh, Madam okay. Mayor. <laughs> now, I better hurry, because we've got to time me. Uh, we are representing residents and homeowners of Dr. Ellis Subdivision. The south side of Tremont Street coming to the City Council again. We thought the concern problem slash problem had been resolved over a year or two ago with our Alderman Mr. Robert Lewis working with the city staff because of our unique situation. The main quote unquote was mistakenly put on the north side of the street on the, pro uh, on the property of the homeowners rather than in the middle of the street almost 50 years ago. Belonging to the city of ban a public right-of-way. Therefore, the homeowners who live on the south side of the street in order to hook their sewer line up to the main or, or the T, quote unquote, must run their line outside of their property parameter through the city of Urbana public right-of-way, in parentheses, sidewalk on the south side, public street, and all the way beyond the sidewalk on the north side of the street even onto the homeowner's property on the north side of the street in order to hook up to the T, quote unquote, or to the main, quote unquote. When the homeowners on the south side of the street experience, experience a severe sewer problem that causes the street to be torn up and put back together with the contractor meeting the city of Urbana specification and requirements, the homeowners of the south side of the street is responsible, quote unquote, for paying the cost. Bids have come in from contractors from $5,500 to $10,000. <clears> we were told by the city that they have some type of program to help pay for open excavation or a program similar to what we are talking about. However, one of our neighbors said that he, pr uh, he received promises from the city of Urbana that they do not, did not keep. I do have information that I got uh, from the city uh, tonight at 5 o'clock, and I do have that, but I'm not going to take time to read it. We're asking, unless you ask me a question, and I get that time. We're asking for an ordinance in Urbana which include a variance that covers our situation specifically, not promises that they will work with our older person as before, and they did not keep their promise. Also, we understand from some of the residents and former residents that we've talked to within the last three days of Dr. Ellis' subdivision that 20 to 25 years ago, promises were made by the city and city council that they were going to dig up the streets and fix their sewer line a fix this sewer line problem that they allow patent homes to get away with created for the first African American Amer African American subdivision in Urbana uh, almost 50 years ago. Since the main is not in the middle of the street so that both sides of the street can have equal access to the main, then the city of Urbana should pay for the cost of tearing up the street and replacing it since it is city right of way and the homeowners should should pay for their house to the city sidewalk and the and any ordinance should reflect this, that when this occurs in the future, there will be no questions of whose responsibility it is for the cost of tearing up the city street. The ordinance that says states, says slash states that the homeowner is responsible for the hookup from the house to the T, no matter where the T is, must not apply to us especially since the quote main unquote is on the north side of the street that current uh, that current ordinance is unfair to the people on the south side of the street and that so-called policy from five or so so years ago does not fit I have it here apply to our unique situation in Dr. Ellis sub subdivision you since have the main you have one minute is, Dr. Underwood is that my five minutes one minute left okay on the uh, on the other side of the street we on the south side do not have equal access that is why we need a variance to make things equal to both sides of the three street the homeowners should not have to pay for the city of Urbana mistake of years ago allowing the main to be put in the wrong place the main should have been in the middle of the street thank you
Now, if there are any questions, I have the information that I got. Oh. Can you tell me how many homes are affected? Okay, so oh, far, so, so far, we uh, this summer there was a, a home affected. Um, we've talked to people who have moved out already and bought other homes, and there are people there. There are some people. Hey, raise your hand. The people who are here so far uh, who have uh, have had problems. There are people who have church meetings and stuff that that they couldn't come tonight. But this is just the beginning. I mean, how many homes are in that situation? Okay, let me tell you, we found block, out right? today that on another street, well, I wanted people to speak for themselves and we didn't get, we got testimonials, but I don't have a five So on, on Tremont Street, is it 13? Tremont Street is the street that is it involved 13? now and was involved this summer, was involved a year and a half ago when we came and talked and Mr. Lewis, Mr. Robert Lewis was working with the city and, and apparently this, um, this policy that you have from 2007 was after, I mean was before we talked to you about this. This policy, well first, is it 13 homes? has nothing to do with our situation. Um, and Dr. the policy Underwood, that you... Is it 13 homes or how many homes are we talking about? Let me clarify. Oh, we, uh, yeah. Okay, okay, Robert Lewis can explain it. I guess. Oh, basically, basically in this situation, in this subdivision, what happened was each lateral going to the main, and that would include Mrs. Underwood Street and all streets running east and west, would have the f folks on the south side would be disadvantaged. Okay, in the so the whole subdivision? The whole subdivision would be that okay. way. And was this in the city when it was um, constructed? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I have a letter that someone wrote, but they're not here to read it. Uh, okay. Any questions for Dr. Underwood? Uh, Eric. So I guess just a clarification, what are the boundaries of the subdivision from Ellis Drive on the south to Beardsley on the north? Bradley. Uh, Bradley. To Bra I'm sorry, Bra to Bradley on the north. Ellis Drive on the south to Bradley on the north. And, and Goodwin. Goodwin on the Romine. east. And Romine. And Romine, Romine, Romine on, on the, the west. west. Okay, so, so all of the east-west streets in that subdivision are in this yeah, at least four, situation. At least and that's what we want to, uh, uh, Mr. Lewis can talk to that, but we wanted to talk more with, the. Uh, that's why when this came up tonight, I wanted to talk about it because what is being, but I don't want to get into that. My husband said, leave that alone. But I'm just saying, what about the engineers? What about, the, have they looked into this? What, because uh, it's, it's a mess under there. For, I wish the next person to talk. 25 years ago, they dealt with this issue when, uh, uh, Someone else was on the city council previous to Mr. Lewis and Mr. Hayes, Money and uh, they were supposed to take care of this matter because it happened 50 years ago when Patton Homes built it, and it was uh, how, how they got away with it. We don't know. Uh, I, we talked to some uh, contractors this week. So, so basically, you you wish for an ordinance that would equalize the liability for repairs between homeowners on the north side and homeowners on the south side in the event that those are necessary. That's right, in the future. In the future, yes. That's right, right. Uh, okay. because if it doesn't, we thought that was handled uh, uh, a year and a half ago, and mm -hmm. Mr. Lewis has been working with the city people, and mm -hmm. then this summer, uh, well, we didn't know what had happened this summer, but in talking to some of the neighbors, uh, there was a problem, and maybe his daughter is going to talk to you because he has pneumonia and was unable to come, mm -hmm. and he was going to speak to that issue. Uh, but, uh, yes, okay. that's what we are looking and for. Yes. Have, have there been any instances so far of people incurring these excessive costs, or is this this is a problem that we ought to deal with before that happens, is, is what you're saying? That's right. Well, okay. what happened, it, it almost happened this summer. Mm -hmm. Uh, it almost happened this summer. It was a $10,000 bid. With, uh, with us, what, uh, a year and a half ago or two years ago when we came, it was going to be, uh, they gave us a $10,000 bid to tear up the street. And, 
and, and something happened that we did not have to tear up the street. But they, there was no way we could get out of it. And that's when Mr. Lewis started negotiating about this. But something happened that we weren't able, didn't have to tear up the street. But this time, there's no way out of it. The streets must be torn up. And, um, uh, and the bids are coming in, and it's, uh, they are very high in the uh, uh, thousands of dollars. Thank you very much. Carol McCusick. Carol McCusick, 1907 North Cunningham. Looks like it. I would like to ask the um, City Council to schedule um, a presentation to answer um, questions about municipal electric aggregation. And I think it should be in, in City Council or City Council Committee of the Whole and a, an agenda item that's separate, um, that is labeled, um, well, I'm suggesting staff officer report on municipal electric aggregation. Because if the um, the item is um, set apart, um, and sometimes you have presentations and discussions on um, subject matters that are, um, then um, you know people will be able to raise their questions at the time of the topic and get and the answers will um, relate to the questions and the um, the topic can be. Um, taken up in a, um, a anticipated and thorough way. And I also think that um, having the set apart agenda item is good because um, it gets a separate video um, segment label. If you want to go find, listen to that again, you'll be able to find um, it, the uh, topic of municipal electric aggregation. Okay, um, because it has been developing over a uh, um, you know, long time so that they, they're, it's buried in start of the meeting or reports of officers at this point and, and, and it's um, very fragmented. So, um, but city council is the place to have it because the people who um, can answer the dif different dimensions of it are here anyway because um, and from largely you know it was crafted by people who come here every week so uh, the people I'm thinking of, of uh, are, are Mike and um, the attorney well it's a replacement attorney now um, but um, at this phase we have like some other dimensions probably um, finance like the, the controller and um, there, there are questions like about um, the process from the meetings of the rest the past year that m the city clerk might um, be able to speak to. So I think all those people plus the uh, s environmental sustainability manager Scott Tess, did I say Mike Munson, chief of staff? So. Um, this would be the place to have it, is what I'm trying to say, not the Sustainability Advisory Committee. The Sustainability Advisory Committee it, Commission is not um, uh, live on television, so even if you had a recording device, you can't um, record it It's um, with your TV. So, okay, if you've had it promoted at the city website, other than on the agenda, which only goes up 48 hours in advance. <coughs> like, you know, there are like some notices and news items, postings on the webpage. Well, any of those seem like they would be good for it. And it should say all the people who are going to be there to answer the dimensions of questions. And the dimensions of questions, I think, are legal questions. They are utility questions. And there are finan uh, financial and administrative questions. Now, with the utility questions, you have one minute, Miss McCusick. 
I don't know that, that we have any expertise in the city itself. So I think we probably need um, our consultant, and the name consultant would kind of tend to imply <laughs> that they're supposed to be able to advise us, and also um, the um, alternative retail electric supplier, Homefield Energy. So if you, even if I think, though I think it should happen soon, if they were needing to be invited, which I think they should be invited and asked the RSVP, um, that would take a little time. But the other thing I was thinking we could get some, tell some contacts at the other communities that are in, that took the, the same bidding process with us. I don't know if they all got, all 53 communities got home field energy, but. And there are some. Okay, thank you very much. Your time is up. Thank you. Um, I have another person. I, I have trouble reading the name. I think the last name is Reed. He built and read. Okay, um, would you please come forward and state your name and address? And you have up to five minutes to um, talk about whatever your concern is. Am I right? I'm not seeing well. I'm not. Oh okay. yeah, you're fine. Oh, good. Um, just you. um, the little black. Thing okay. on the bottom Thank there you. is the microphone and just please um, state your name and address. My name is Ethel Reed and the name on there is Ebella Reed. E. We Bell. also uh, live in Ellis Edition and matter of fact we're next door to Dr. and Bishop Underwood and we own properties there. We're next door and also the house that has the adjoining the, where the main sewage is across the street on the north side we own the next door property there. So we, it does affect us. And I think we have more sewage people coming out in our area, I bet, than any neighborhood you ever heard of. And now I know why. It's because of, you know, just the way the thing is set up. And it's, we're just always constantly having someone. Fortunately, we were fortunately, we did get some insurance for sewage. And if we didn't have that, because every year we just have people, nobody but me and my husband, we know we're not doing the wrong things that, to stop a sewage up, but it's just plugged up and running slow all the time. And sometimes there are odors there. And the, one, the, the insurance one that we have that does the sewage, they are saying that we have stuff that is just growing there and it's not open like it should, and now we know why. And we, this is something that should have been fixed years ago, as you said, but, and I have relatives that live there, I have children that live there, and it's getting to be even more and more problem, I guess, because the sewage is getting older, and that even causing more problem. The trees are big and the roots are bigger, and it's caused, really causing some severe problem, and it's very expensive to have, which I'm sure everyone here know, to have someone to come out to unstop your sewage. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Barbara Lewis. Barbara Lewis is my name. I'm actually here representing my father who lives on Tremont. Um, Joe Lewis, he lives at 1211 West Tremont. Um, you asked the question earlier, Mr. Jacobson, regarding someone who's actually have problems with their sewer. He is one of the uh, residents that has had problems. Um, last year, he had to have not only his yard um, dug up, he had to have part of the sidewalk and the neighbor's yard across the street dug up mm -hmm. in order to fix his sewer problem. The original bid for him to have it done was $10,000. Um, he was able to find someone who was able to do it for, for less. So, um, and they've had constant sewer problems f for years. And so finally they just had to, to um, figure out what the main problem was. And that's when they found out that the um, T-line was across the street on the north mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, it, it is a problem. Eric. Um. Do you, do you know or does anybody know what the cost would have been 
to the owner on the north side of the street? They really don't have a, a major cost because the T-line is in front of their yard, so they don't have to go across the street. They just have to go in front of their house, wherever everybody else on the south side has to go from not only their yard across the street in front of the people on the north side. So they don't have to go far. If they have a sewer line problem, they just have to go from their front of their house down to the sidewalk in front of their house. So I, I guess what I'm groping for is to try to figure out what, okay, you, have, you had a bid of $10,000 or maybe it's be a little bit less, but what would it have been if he lived the on line, the north if, side? Or, or what would it have been if the line was running down the middle? Is there any way... Well, there's no way of knowing because it doesn't yeah. run down the middle. So you really can't determine what the cost is going to be for something that's not actually yeah. in occurrence. Well, except maybe, maybe I, and I don't know what it would be, but maybe there are examples of, of costs in other streets, in other parts of town where it does run down the middle. And I mean, uh, What I'm trying to figure I, out. I mean, I'd be happy to find out if there yeah. are any sewer lines that run down the middle yeah. of the street and see what the costs have been for those particular right. residential areas. What, uh, what I'm trying to figure out, I mean, I, I guess I personally, I'm just speaking for myself, I, I'm convinced that there is an injustice here, but I'm trying to figure out what is the magnitude of it, you know, like in dollars. How, what, what, I, what, what, I understand. I mean, the if there is any way to, to find out. If there's yeah. a residential area where the sewer line runs down the middle yeah. to see what the cost has been for them to repair it compared yeah. to with the sewer line being on the opposite side of the street. Uh, yeah, I think this, the city can find that right. out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Would, would, you know, try to figure out what the best solution is going to be. Okay. Fair to everybody. Sounds good. Uh, Robert? My understanding is, based on what I'm hearing, and, and I think that... Um, Maybe it's my fault because I didn't ask for it in writing before, but I thought I was pretty clear as to what I was trying to define, and I think I defined the problem quite well. Obviously, it, it is, and I'll just reiterate the situation, this 1950 vintage sewer system was placed in the wrong place, and it puts all the people that live on the south side of the streets on, in this subdivision at jeopardy of spending whoever is living on the south side they can anticipate a ten thousand dollar bill if they have to get it replaced <laughs> that's the bottom line if you want to look at numbers that's about what it looks like okay yeah. so that's why I brought it up before and that was to to articulate the fact that if it's down the middle where it should be theoretically but the ordinance always said to the T. Now, yeah. Yeah. if it were down the middle of the street, it's equitable. Each person would have to play to say the same, you know, in terms of the amount. If it's a ten thousand dollar bill, everybody play five grand, right? Mm -hmm. That's just using numbers. But the bottom line is, this is an infrastructure that's way out of and of season because of its construction. And additionally, the city of Urbana is a city of trees, right? We love our trees. And as trees grow, they get huge. And when an, a mature oak tree runs into a old sewer line, it's going to tear it up, mm -hmm. okay? And that's where we are right now. And, and the people that are living on the south side of the street are paying the impact of mm -hmm. that True. number one the city likes trees you love your trees you can keep them my house I had them on land I took that big thing out so I don't have to mess with it anymore because I had to put in 120 feet of line because of a tree and I took the whole tree out and it's uh, it's a problem for these folks and you can take the magnitude and look at the subdivision count the houses on the south side take it times mm -hmm. 10 grand, and you got a magnitude of the problem that they would have to put out over time. Mm -hmm. Sure, and, and it, right, but, and, I, and I, I agree that, you know, we want to fix it. I'm just trying to sort of figure out what's the right fix. We're, we're clearly not going to 
tear out all the te all those lines <laughs> and put them back in the middle of the street, and, and so you know just 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 trying to uh, figure out what's what's the right. I mean, well, I think we'll work. I think staff will work it out. What's what's the right formula to uh, do that? The o the only other thing I moved to to say is I wonder if the city arborist could um, provide some guidance that we could post on because some trees are going to be more problematic than others as they grow up. Uh, I mean, oak trees that spread roots out across a very, very wide uh, distance, for example, uh, if they're anywhere near a line, are maple, ultimately going to cause problems. There are other ground. trees where the root system doesn't spread out so far. And I wonder if, if, uh, I wonder if, if this could be something we could ask uh, our arborist to uh, provide the public with some guidance on. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Edward McChee, Pastor Edward McChee. McGee. 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 I'm sorry. I, I didn't read it correctly. I apologize. No problem. Okay. Probably the H what did it. No, it was the C that I thought oh. it was a C and okay. it's a G. It's one of sorry. That's that's fine. Uh, let me just say uh, to the honorable mayor and the council members, thank you for considering this matter. Um, I'm here in support of the rezoning. Uh, and so for many years, we had hoped to do something with the property, but was never able to develop it because we bought it with the idea of uh, building a, a church. But when we uh, looked into the matter, we found out that the uh, landscaping and what have you uh, that's required wouldn't have enough land to really build anything insignificant. And so we have. Uh, looked on to other things to try to develop the property. At one time, I think about seven years ago, we were in um, uh, agreement with the um, uh, city of Urbana when they had what they called, had transit homes and that, that one property, the way we have the house now, was in, it entered into that, uh, uh, what they called transit housing, what they was getting a grant for. So we. We entered into that agreement with them uh, for them se seven years, and so we have been working with them in that area. But uh, uh, we had hoped that we would be able to do something there that would also enhance the community. Uh, and, uh, not, and considering the uh, people that live there, uh, and being a pastor, I almost, my goal and my thoughts is always to enhance the community and. Uh, not to do any damage to it. So uh, the uh, zoning that we are uh, asking for, I think it would help to enhance uh, the area. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we'll, we'll study this topic some more and, and uh, bring back some solutions. Uh, the next item on the agenda, unfinished business, we have a um, discussion of social service funding. So far, we've met with um, representatives from community elements and um, the United Way, and we're also going to be meeting with the city of Champaign. This is about trying to get Champaign to um, just have a broader community involvement in helping social service agencies looking for ways that they could cooperate if they're working on the same issue so that Urbana can do a better job of allocating the funding that we do for social services. So we're in discussions with, with people right now. Um, anybody have any suggestions? Oh, Janelle, would you like to say something? Okay, anybody else have any suggestions of if you've thought about the social service funding issue? I was just going to remind folks that uh, Diane sent you sent your forms around again, which has a rating system, and 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 I, one of the thoughts was to to build on that. Um, remind people that now is the time to go look at that, mm -hmm. uh, and if we actually want to to dig in, we should we should and set that use that criteria as a starting point. We should set that as a committee agenda item uh, for one of our next two committee meetings in January. Okay. 
Then we'll be able to talk about what we've um, discussed with Champagne too. Okay, we'll do that. I'd like to. Yes, Robert. I'd like to encourage our community, those that are listening and those that are in the audience, to give your input on this social service issue because we are in a situation that funds are diminishing and we have increasing needs on our community for social services. And you may have not heard it on the last time we talked about it, but our police department, for example, is picking up the slack for our mental health issues. They're having to deal with them as police officers, which is a problem. when We don't have enough money for the appropriate people to handle those situations. So I encourage you, if you have ideas on how we might approach the allocation of our funding, we don't have a whole lot. Uh, we're trying to work with Champaign on sharing that load as well. So uh, I encourage you to, uh, if you have input, to bring it to us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Eric. Yeah, the only other thing I would, I would point out is that up to now, and I guess I kind of trust that my colleagues on the council and, and the mayor will continue this, this, we have worked very, very hard on the budget not to cut social service spending in the last few years. And uh, we, we have made it, you know, other governmental entities have cut way back. Uh, we've actually, to say the dreaded T word, raised taxes in order not to have to cut for one, one, and one of the reasons was not to have to cut back on social services. So we are committed to that, but we're a small group of people and broad community input into how, how that's allocated uh, you know, to broaden our perspective is, is, would really be great. Thank you. Uh, reports of standing committees, I don't believe we have any reports or reports of special committees. Reports of officers, any reports of officers? Tom Carino. Yes, good evening. Uh, everyone should have received an, an electronic copy of this month's economic development report. Just to highlight a few items, uh, you should have before you a, a redesign of what we call the Quick Reference and Resource Guide. Uh, so we have a redesign that's been reprinted and we're in the process of distributing those to various city departments uh, to be distributed to the public. Uh, also, the 2013 Urbana Arts Grants applications are now available. Uh, those applications are due on January 13th, and those will be submitted electronically. Uh, we're trying a new electronic submission system this year uh, so that um, those are now available. And then finally, uh, the Urbana Business Association announced that they're going to try a new uh, market called the Middle Market, and that's to bridge the gap between the Holiday Market and the City's Market at the Square. Those will be happening uh, mid-month, January through April and vendors can contact the UBA uh, if they're interested. So uh, that's all I have. I'd be happy to try to answer questions. Diane. I had a couple. This is terrific. Where is there a link? Where on the city website would the public get a link to this? I know it's available on the website. I'd have to check to see exactly where it's available because okay. we have the residence section, which is where it would be most appropriate, and then we, it could possibly also be linked to the visitor section, so I'll uh, find that out, and I will send the link out to okay, all of City Council. Great. And then I had a question about the um, report. You um, referred to the Land of Lincoln Regional Tourism Office. What, I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar with this office. What do they do? How are we working with them? And um, what kind of impact are we seeing? with that particular organization? Uh, it's a relatively new relationship. Uh, they are a state-funded organization. Uh, they are, in effect, a I would call them like a regional convention and visitors bureau. Uh, they, um, they do uh, advertising in state publications. We actually have a cooperative advertisement with them in the state tourism publication. Uh, and we've also been uh, attending events um, in conjunction with them. There was an event recently down in Effingham related to uh, Central Illinois tourism 
that Natalie Kenny Marquez attended. Uh, so I would basically say that they are a tourism organization that's regional to central Illinois. Is there a charge for belonging to this organization? Well, I guess the state is funding. No, really what they are is they're a state-funded organization whose purpose is to leverage other uh, people trying to reach out to visitors and tourists in central Illinois. Uh, so it's not a membership organization, but it's an organization, again, funded by the state to help leverage other communities and how they reach out to tourists and to visitors. Okay, any other questions for Tom? Thank you very much, Tom, and it's a very attractive document. Uh, Thank any you other? to Natalie, who designed it. Yes, she did a nice job. Um, any other reports of officers? Okay, we'll move be, on uh, to Mayor, new... Okay, Charlie? Be, be, before we jump into new business, I think one of the intentions, uh, if I understood Robert correctly, was to ask that staff uh, from Public Works come back with some kind of report on the Ellis subdivision at either the next meeting or the committee meeting after that. Some one of the next two committee sub or one of the next two committee meetings. Is that correct, Robert? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we've got. I'll bring it up at the staff meeting. Okay. Um, yeah. Tomorrow and Bill Gray is here, so I'm sure that we'll. Yeah. We'll so that the public this. that's addressed this knows that it will will appear as an agenda item sometime in the very near future. Correct. So okay. Okay, new business. First is ordinance number 2012, or excuse me, 2013-01-001, an ordinance amending the comprehensive plan map of the city of Urbana. And this is for 1501 North Goodwin Avenue and 1205 West Bradley Avenue uh, from residential urban pattern to community business. And Robert Myers is here to explain this. Thank you. Uh, if it's okay with you, I'll just cover both of these, uh, one presentation for both agenda items because okay. they are related. Um, but um, <clears throat> again, this is a request to rezone 1501 North Goodwin Avenue and 1205 West Bradley Avenue. And it's uh, two properties, about three and a half acres at the southwest corner of Bradley and Goodwin Avenue in Northwest Urbana. And the image that you have before you, it's probably now burned in your brain since it's been up a little while. But um, essentially, um, I kind of characterize this as an undeveloped block uh, that's in an area that's uh, surrounded by um, development. And um, uh, so this block is currently zoned R2, single family residential. And it has been zoned for single family for uh, many decades. Uh, but it's undeveloped, and in fact, I don't believe that it's ever been developed except for the home that's at 1205 West Bradley Avenue. And I'll talk about that a little more in just a moment. Um, but the development that's around it right now, to the east, you have the Illinois American Water Company, Wellhead. To the northwest, you have One North. To the north, you have Mount Olive uh, Baptist Church. It's uh, in Cham Champaign, technically. And then to the northwest, the west, and the south, you do have these single-family residential um, blocks and neighborhoods that are adjoining it uh, to the south and southwest. And the zoning you'll see, uh, the yellow represents R2, single-family residential, and the brown color represents um, zoning for apartments. Uh, the area that's in, in white is outside the city. It's in Champaign. And so again, the property, this property has been zoned for single family residential for um, many decades, but it's still currently vacant. Under the comprehensive plan, it calls for, for it's located here, it calls for the future land use of the property to be um, residential. And that's why you have before you both a comprehensive plan amendment and a rezoning request to be both considered concurrently as part of the, of the same application. And um, if I could back up for just a moment, um, Alpha and Omega Church, they're the property owners. I know they've been thinking about what to do with this property for some time. In 2006, um, they ha held a series of design charrettes with the Alpha Omega Development Corporation. And in fact, I um, 
set in as a resource, just to answer questions about what potentially um, could take place under the current zoning, and if um, what um, zoning would be necessary for other types of uses. And I would say that um, Alpha and Omega Development Corporation really thought about a range of uses, everything from single family residential, um, a single family residential with a new street, single family residential without a new street, apartments. I remember talking about neighborhood commercial, a, um, a uh, community center, um, computer lab. These are the ideas that I remember. You know, uh, pizza shop, um, laundry mat, and institutions, and really kind of the full range. So there was a lot of brainstorming that took place, and there was uh, a fair amount of investigation, I understand, that took place um, after this 2006 design charrette. And then I do, I look back at my records, and in 2009, they asked for um, a list of um, realtors who might potentially be able to do a feasibility study for reuse of the property. The reason I say this, I think there's been a pretty serious consideration about what could go here under the current zoning and under a potential new zoning district. Um, what you have before you is a neighborhood um, business zoning, B2. And that zoning would actually allow many of the things that I just mentioned. For instance, it would allow single family residential by right, it would allow apartments by right, and it would allow some low intensity commercial uses uh, by right. Some other commercial uses would require special permissions, like anything with a, uh, a liquor license uh, would require, like a liquor store would require special permissions to come back to the city, and some other uses like that. Um, right now, there's a proposed development um, on the table, so to speak, and that's for a funeral home. And the um, applicants have indicated that uh, the west half of the property is, is what they're looking at uh, for the funeral home. I can say that um, B2 zoning requires a 10-foot side yard setback and requires a, a minimum of six-foot high uh, solid fence. Uh, for a side yard, and for a rear yard when you're joining residential, it requires um, a landscape buffer at least five feet deep, um, and I believe it's one tree and three bushes for every 40 lineal feet. And um, over time, it it grows the point. It becomes a kind of a visual screen. I mean, it's not it doesn't totally block out uh, things, but it does ha act as a buffer or as a as a screen. So that's the um, some of our requirements when neighbor commercial joins. Uh, residential. The reason I mention um, y use of the property over a long period of time is that several of the zoning criteria actually refer back to um, some of these criteria that comes into play with some of the criteria. I looked back at the aerial photographs from 1973. The property was undeveloped. I looked back at the 1940 believe it or not, aerial photograph. And the property was um, undeveloped at that time in 1940. And in fact, this whole area was what looks like to me a big farm. And there was a farmhouse in this block, a pre-1919 farmhouse that was uh, finally demolished according to our records in the 1990s, I believe, if that's correct. The reason I think this is significant is that I don't think the block has ever been developed despite its residential zoning for many uh, decades. And so I think that probably does say something about the market at this moment for residential in this block. Um, so I think that does speak to some of the criteria here. Now having said that, the B2 zoning would still allow single family residential by right and apartments uh, and churches and some light commercial. Um, so in those respects, I think it does make sense in terms of compatibility, in terms of uh, land uses. Uh, and um, I'd also add that the Plan Commission held a public hearing um, to consider this case. And just to give you a quick overview, we had some communications from uh, neighbors. Um, 
who were concerned about this. Thelma Harris from 1303 West Bradley um, communicated she was not in support of commercial. Dorothy Carter at 1505 North Romine uh, communicated she does not support commercial. And then the Carver Park Neighborhood Association indicated that they do not support commercial rezoning. Um, on the other hand, we also had um, a couple of speakers in conjunction with the, the applicants. We have in your packet, you have a letter from uh, Alex Ruggieri from Ramshaw Realty with a professional opinion about what uh, the best zoning would be for this property, and he felt that uh, B2 would uh, be a good match for <coughs> zoning. And then finally, at the public hearing, in addition to the applicants, um, uh, we also had, I'm sorry, let me make sure I have the name correct. Uh, James Buckley from Man Olive Baptist Church expressed he, was concern he would be concerned about uh, traffic that would be caused by any um, new development on this location, which I understand. Um, also in thinking about it though, um, if a church had gone here, as were the original plans of Alpha and Omega, that would have caused some traffic too. I think a, in terms of, of uses, a, a funeral home um, it has uh, very little impacts on neighbors except for periodically you'll have, when you have a, a, um, an event, uh, a service, um, a funeral, you're going to have traffic at that time. Most of the time it's going to be, uh, the effects on the neighbors will be uh, very um, low intensity. So um, in that regard, I think um, it, we already have a prospective low intensity uh, business use for half the property. Let's see. Now, um, I, I would say that uh, the plan commission was actually split on this. There was a, a three recommended in favor and two against. And I think some of it boils down to, my reading was it kind of boils down to whether you think this is in, this property is in the middle of the neighborhood, where this introduce new business uses potentially in the middle of a neighborhood, or is this sufficiently on the edge of uh, the neighborhood um, in that, um, you know, across the street you have, um, you have multifamily uses in the northwest, and it's fairly close to uh, Lincoln Avenue. What you have between Lincoln Avenue and this site is that that big, uh, the big pond for the um, uh, the water company. So I think that um, the consideration in that regard fell on both sides. Two commissioners felt that this would be introducing uh, business uses in the middle of the neighborhood, and the other commissioners kind of expressed that they thought it was sufficiently on the edge of the neighborhood to. To be a, that it could be a, uh, a good neighbor. Um, city staff, um, in their review of this case, um, we would concur with the plan commission and recommend in favor of uh, rezoning to B2, neighborhood business district, and amending the comprehensive plan to, um, to community business. Okay. Um. You're talking about a, a buffer on the south side? Sounds like we better be very careful what kind of trees go in that buffer, right? <laughs> right. Well, we actually do have a list of trees that can go into buffers. Um, we rely on uh, public works and the Arbor Division to help us with those okay. trees. Choose those trees. Diane. Is this um, part of Bradley Avenue on the UC2B? Um, network is it one of the goes right down here okay anyone else well, oh Diane well I intend to support rezoning to um, to be to for the neighborhood business for this area um, for several reasons one the location being it's at the corner of Goodwin Avenue and Bradley Avenue which is a, a busy corner and the fact that it um, has direct access to our broadband um, network, I think this makes it an ideal location for a business that could take advantage of, of high-speed network or community center or whatever. But, but this is an ideal location for a small business that could 
be right on the UC2B um, network. And also, um, I appreciate the plan commissioner's um, specific reference to the developer and encouraging them to uh, adhere to the zoning and the setbacks so that the adequate buffers can be made on the west and the south. And, um, and so I encourage whatever site plan is developed, make sure there's a nice buffer for the neighborhood. And, um, and third, I think if this property has been sitting vacant for over 40 years and the church has made a concerted effort to find many different uses for it, if, if it was going to be developed as housing, it probably would have happened now. And this doesn't preclude multifamily or single family housing in the future. So I think this opens up options without making it too um, much of a, too severe of an impact on the neighborhood. And plus I think it, it could very well enhance this corner and the neighborhood. So I intend to support it. Eric? Uh, I, I also intend to support it. I'm going to ask a question of you as a planner, and this is a little bit speculative, but do you think that the development of this property might have positive implications for the future development of the vacant property just north of Bradley Avenue? It's right, right across Bradley Avenue to the north, hmm. which is, is also vacant but looks to me as though it's in an area that's quite reasonable for well for the R4 that's just to the east of it the area across uh, Brad Avenue to the north that I'm thinking of that's vacant it's on by um, I believe it's on by one north and they're looking at doing um, um, a lot line adjustment that would help them position the property for future development for and the current zoning is residential so um, I think it I think it's uh, definitely ripe for a residential development there okay is there a motion this is an uh, ordinance uh, Charlie uh, yeah my, my biggest con I, I think uh, you know the, the the planned use is very appropriate uh, and fits in with the neighborhood. Uh, uh, remind people that we used to have a, a funeral home right here at Green and um, Birch or Cedar. You know, it was right in the middle of that neighborhood, and 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 um, it's it's compatible use. Uh, the concerns are what happens if the mortuary fails or it turns over. It could be some other B two business. Mm -hmm. uh, I almost wish we could do housing along the Beardsley. The south, the south part of the block, you know, that th that could be six or eight or twelve, you know, units of affordable housing across the south, and have the mortuary take everything on the north uh, Bradley uh, section. Um, uh, that that would be a, a slightly different configuration. It would require taking the house down at 1205 immediately. I understand, you know, now that I see this picture from from an o an another aerial view and think about what I, I can see how the mortuary fits behind the houses. Uh, fits to the east of the houses on on Matthews uh, I'm sorry on uh, yeah, on Matthews uh, and but west of the existing house there it lets the existing house stay there uh, indefinitely until there's a proposed use for the for the eastern half of the property uh, the access uh, I didn't know about the access road to Bra uh, Goodwin uh, again until I saw it here from the aerial uh, a little more clearly uh, so so it leaves me with one concern which is protecting the houses to the south you know the houses that are on the other side of Beardsley to the south of this property and so Robert could you remind me again what is that what's the backyard border and setback requirements okay. here the um, rear yard setback in the B2 is a minimum of 15 feet and there's a required um, rear yard landscape buffer and the buffer itself has got to be Minimum depth of five feet. So you have a, basically 20 feet of. We have 20 feet of setback and and buffering that that can be done along there. Then. Uh, well, within the 15 feet, five of that would be oh, okay. landscape buffer. Okay. And uh, we require at least one tree and three bushes okay. every 40 okay. feet. So we have basically 15 feet of buffering and and landscaping across there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is which is fairly good. Okay. Thank you. 
Is there a motion? Okay, motion by Lewis, seconded by Jacobson. Any further discussion? Right, this is ordinance number 2013-01-001. This is to change the comprehensive plan map of the city of Urbana. And the next ordinance is about the zoning. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Marlin? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. That motion carries. Next, ordinance number 2013-01-002, an ordinance amending the zoning map of the city of Urbana, and this is to rezone 1501 North Goodwin Avenue and 1205 West Bradley Avenue from R2, single family residential zoning district to B2, neighborhood business arterial district. And uh, B2 does allow residential as well, correct? It right. does. Yeah. Second. Okay, motion by Smythe, seconded by Marlin. Any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Marlin? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. That motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, finally, I have a little report on the hotel motel tax. Um, we passed um, two things. We raised the, the tax in October 2011 from 5% to 6%, and before that, we had um, cut the funding for the Tourism Bureau. And so the question was, was this, was either of these or both of these things going to adversely affect our hotel and motel business in Urbana. So I asked for some statistics recently and was very pleasantly surprised that um, with the tax um, for the last full fiscal year, which um, ended June 30th of uh, 2012, um, we had a 35.6% increase and over the previous year. And that was only part of that year had the um, tax increase because it, it started October 1st. And I looked at what Champaign had, and they had 9.6%, so that was pretty significant. And then just to get an idea of the underlying growth aside from the tax increase, um, if you back that out, I had another table and just multiplied all the taxes since... Um, <coughs> October 1st by 5 6 to you know back it down to a 5% tax rate then we had 18% growth and that's still par a partial year um, but you know since it's all 5% it, it um, it's even every one was done on a 5% tax rate so we had 18% growth and again Champagne had 9.6% so that was a very pleasant surprise that uh, neither one of those measures seems to have had a um, adverse effect on Urbana's uh, hotel motel business. Any questions about that? Yay. Okay. Yay for us. Yay for our hotels and motels. They seem to be doing a good job. So if there is no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much.